it's a 30 minute conversation with some of the most fascinating people in Trinidad and Tobago where we discuss issues that matter to us. So on February 5th, um, a young woman was killed publicly, Jamila de Revenue, at Movie Town. Unfortunately, this is not the first murder of its kind. So it sparked a conversation about gender based violence and the responsibility of the community, our women, to protect themselves. I have with me Dr. Suan Barrett. She's a lecturer at the Institute of Gender and Development Studies at UWE. So I thought she was the ideal person to have this conversation with because in a previous conversation with um, Dr. Barrett, we were talking about gender-based violence. Now is a good time to revisit that conversation. Dr. Barrett, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So what, let, let's get right into it because people are talking about women's responsibilities, right. of course, jumping off from the Prime Minister's statements. But just in general, even if he hadn't made his statement, people were talking about women's responsibilities in violence when they're in violent, intimate partner, violent mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, this whole idea of women having that responsibility is a complex and problematic mm -hmm. idea or belief system, I would say. I would even extend it to ideology. The idea that women are responsible for what happens to them is a way of, one, removing accountability from those who perpetrate violence against women, mm -hmm. usually men, but of course not exclusive to men only. Right. The second thing is that women are, are granted particular statuses in our societies, including the Caribbean. And I'm not going to go into literature, this is not a classroom, <laughs> but it always jumps up as, as I talk. But basically you have a status that subordinates you, whether we like to admit to it or not, because mm -hmm. we feel empowered, we have things going for us. You are to be in the private sphere. You are to be subordinated to your male leader. Mm -hmm. Religion reinforces it. Uh, romance force, is, a, is a discourse that is, re that is reinforced. So when a woman experiences violence or experiences any kind of negative consequence because of her existence, the presumption is that she has stepped outside of her designated status. So in essence, if you are in a relationship, you are at once absolutely responsible for maintaining your status, but absolutely powerless and you do not have the means to actually maintain any status because you are always responding. You are not given that proactive role. Yeah. Now you could take that. In the Caribbean, because of our history as post-colonial societies, women often find themselves trapped between an empowered archetype, always working, strong, deliberate, etc. Go to school, you know, get all of these things to have a livable life. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the romantic ideal still relies you should get married, have a husband, have babies, and live that domestic and life. And then the rules of being in a relationship for women are different. You have to love, honor, and obey. Exactly. The man is the head of the household. Exactly. So if that man who you are supposed to love, honor, and obey, who is supposed to be the head of your household, is hitting you. Then or, you must have done something. Yes. You must have done something that is attached to one of those statuses, mm -hmm. to your wifely role, to your motherly role, yeah. to your partner role. You must have done something to be a disappointment. And so as much as the presumption is that you are the wrong party, you must have done something. That man who is in charge couldn't possibly be. And we could step back to just philosophy that says women are unexplainable and of nature and therefore uh, do not have the sense to transcend. Therefore, she has to lead. Therefore, if she gets punished, it's her pu if she gets beaten, it's her punishment. Mm -hmm. So it's so complex that to say to a woman or to even tell your friend, girl, think smarter. Huh? You know, you really should. You really should know. You should know how to choose. You cannot predict another person's personality. Mm -hmm. You don't have that ability. You could wait and see. You could, you could have signs and sim symptoms, but it's all about reinforcing, well, you're not really supposed to be here in the first place. Beyond your procreative role, mm -hmm. you really don't have any value. And that is where the ultimate problem lies. And that's why so much victim blaming and statements such as, you know, you should make the choice and no one else is called to account for. Can we talk about victim blaming a little bit? I, I wonder if people fully understand what that word means. 
a lot of people pounce on it mm -hmm. as a sort of a buzzword, yeah. but they fail to realize it's a really simple concept. Mm -hmm. Victim blaming, and I think the last time we had a conversation when we were talking about life in leggings, yeah. I spoke about the just will belief. I tried mm -hmm. to situate it philo philosophically. We have this ultimate belief. We may not wish to have it or not, but you know, it's insidious. Mm -hmm. Good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. Right. Therefore, if something bad happens to you, you must be bad. Yeah. Because it's a naive theory that we are not aware of. It's there. Now, you could challenge that deliberately, but you have to acknowledge it first. Mm -hmm. So if something happens to someone and you immediately say, well, there must have been something that you would have done yeah. to deserve. Trigger that behavior exactly. towards you. Exactly. Because why are they doing it to you and not someone else? Exactly. The only time that we wouldn't victim blame is if we have a pure victim, someone who you're like, there is no possible way mm -hmm. this person could be responsible. Let's say in the case of a very small child. Mm -hmm. Or even in the case of what happened with Shannon Banfield, remember the lady mm -hmm. who was scared yeah. and I am, etc. Where when you trace the events of her case, there was very little opportunity for you to say, well, she must have done something mm -hmm. to deserve it. So everybody's like, oh, my God, this is a really extreme now because yes. she is a pure victim. Mm -hmm. But victim blame is simply attributing responsibility and accountability to someone who has experienced a negative thing and not at all accounting for the person who has perpetrated it. Right. Because we have this belief that you must in some way be deserving yeah. of that behavior. And that's inherently problematic. Yeah, so victim blaming is like your car is stolen. You left your window down, mm -hmm. you left your keys in your car, How or you parked, park? it, you parked it in a spot and you know there's yes. no light, yes. that sort of thing. Yes, or a lady or a person, recently there was a robbery where it was a woman who robbed uh, some people and they had a Bible, I think I heard it on the mm -hmm, news mm -hmm, two days, mm -hmm, that particular mm -hmm. story. And they were robbed of however many thousand, however much you know, money and jewelry, etc. The first thing people say, well, what do you do with all that money and jewelry in your house? Which then removes you from having rights to have whatever you want in your house. How dare you? Yes, how you, dare you? You are now it no could longer. Fail. It could, you look for that. Yeah. My, my, my interpretation is the idea that you look for that in Trinidad Palance. Yes. Yeah. So victim blaming is you get robbed, well, maybe you shouldn't be wearing a flashy thing. You get raped, well, what did you wear? What did you say? How did you smile? How dare you wear that costume? Thank you. Yeah. You, you get killed, mm -hmm. well, maybe you should have known to choose better. Yeah. Because if you had choose better, you would not have gotten killed or you wouldn't have choos chosen a killer. So mm -hmm. let's talk about, you did a talk um, a few months ago mm -hmm. at IGDS and we were talking about psychology and gender mm -hmm. um, and we were focusing on domestic violence. And you had a very interesting argument that domestic violence is a community problem yes. and it requires a community solution. That yes. runs counter to what we see or what yes. we, we've been taught to do. Yes. Don't get involved in big people business. You know, you, you constantly hear police officers trying to tell people, if you hear something, call. Yes. But you kind of don't want to be the person to call because yes. you feel the neighbor will know is you that make the report. Yes. And then now you're in the middle of their relationship. But you're saying, forget that. It's a community problem. If you can hear you're part of the problem, it's affecting you, you need to be part of the solution. Yes. And to, to elaborate on, on what I was saying, and of course, to elaborate on what you're asking me, when I said that, first of all, it is a community problem because of the frequency with which it happens. Mm -hmm. The fact that we assume that domestic equals private, but domestic is removed from society. Yeah. Domestic is a space that we live and occupy as part of our everyday, but it expands. We, we, we are in communities, all of us operating in these spaces. Mm -hmm. So the space is not isolated. You don't live in a vacuum. So that's practical. Practical. Number two, we have reached a point a long time ago uh, in the 80s or 90s, I can't tell you the exact date, mm -hmm. where we felt the need to to create policy to deal with violence within the home or between intimate partners. Not only, let's say, married partners or lovers and mm -hmm. so forth, but people who are in close personal relationships. And the reason why we do so is because we realize that there is a, uh, an impact. I don't like to say trickle-down effect. That's very, you know, <laughs> neoliberal. Right. But there is an impact that expa extends. Mm -hmm. 
you have both victim and perpetrator experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder quite often and then that leaves the domestic quite quickly and goes to the professional space or mm. goes to the street you have the ideologies that lead to all of this violence you have children who cannot function you have productivity all of that capitalists care about yeah. right yeah the money is affected yeah so exactly. i'm talking to the capitalists here but in terms of those <laughs> so who are capitalist I, concerns <laughs> yes for, for finding solutions to domestic violence yes your money is going to be disrupted. <laughs> it is. So it is a community problem because you need to then preserve a functional community that can then work. And abused people are not good employees and they're not good members no. of societies. Neither are abusers. Exactly, because you're, you're spending time coping without dealing. Mm -hmm. And you, you have people experiencing um, mental illness problems, especially de depression. You have people experiencing hypervigilance, mm -hmm. confusion, all of these things. Now, we have an ideology in the Caribbean you get through, especially amongst women. You mm -hmm. get through things. You mm -hmm. will get through. Mm -hmm. Some people do it through prayer. Some people like, I'll just persevere. Mm -hmm. But in getting through a part of yourself is, you know, left behind. Sometimes people are aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. road rage. Yeah. You have all of these symptoms of something that may be happening in private but mm -hmm. has implications for the public. So what I'm saying is, you see, when your close friend, your family, your neighbor, whoever... I know it is difficult. I'm not going to sit here and say it is, it is easy to intervene in yeah. people business, yeah. as we say here. Mm -hmm. But you then have to find a way, if that person is close to you or that person is somebody you see, to say, you know, there are con some concerns. I, I, I'm here for you. Give the person an option. You know, the people who work with domestic violence um, survivors always say have a safety plan and they have these practical elements get a protection order which we have established doesn't always protect actually mm -hmm. leads sometimes to death because of the underlying ideology that's disrupted mm -hmm. but if a person feels that i have a person i could go to see me right because i know that she's sympathetic and wouldn't judge me mm -hmm. i know um i could go by my neighbor or whatever it is then that person is more likely we always ask why do they stay more likely to seek assistance yeah. in changing their material situation. But they can't do it without a community, male or female. They can't do it without knowing I can get some support. Because yeah. a lot of people operate in shame. Because you're like, how could this possibly happen to me? Yeah. How could not I have seen it coming? How did I not know better? How did I choose? Because exactly. we, 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 we're saying, you know, you should choose better. But sometimes the victim is going through that turmoil themselves. Exactly. How did I pick? This person this creature. could beat me. Exactly. And you know? remember, you don't fall in love with a violent, vile murder or possibility. And violent, vile murderers are very complex people because they're not always evil. Exactly. Sometimes they can be very loving. Exactly. And probably they're not, they too need attention. I'm not mm. all about, you know, we help the victim. I think mm -hmm. we do need to help people who perpetrate these yeah. things. I think we do need to start to have adult conversations with men especially because you know men are in the, the majority and sometimes they're, they're victims as well they exactly. may be they may have witnessed abuse in their homes so they may have been beaten yes they've been, been taught they've seen their mothers exactly. being beaten exactly and they don't know how to negotiate process, negotiate properly exactly. process their pain or their frustration yes it's it's a it's a cycle they they require help as well they too some of them living in post post-traumatic stress yeah some of them don't understand how to deal with no or rejection because they have been facilitated so much yeah. because you have that COVID prestige of masculinity. And so when you are confront that from a grown female, not a juvenile, you, you're surprised. You're like, why is this happening? I know I'm entitled. So all of those things, you need help. And if you help, then you can start to transform. Mm -hmm. But we can't vilify and say, well, you're just dirty. Yeah. In addition... Uh, people, when you see people transform, you have to say, what are these elements that are leading to this transformation? So, you know, it is really simplistic mm -hmm. and dismissive to claim, oh, well, why do women stay? Yeah. Or wh why she go back? Or why he, he don't say anything? Or, well, you should have sense. Mm -hmm. You're pretending that you have not lived a problematic everyday. Yeah. I also think that some people feel guilty about that problematic everyday that they are complicit in. And I'm going to repeat that, that we are all complicit, <laughs> complicit in. in. And then to have to admit it and take responsibility as a community means that you have to confront your own demons. And of course, we have to admit that's really difficult because yeah. you're asking people to out themselves. And 
Yeah, that's not pleasant. Who wants to do that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know? So when I, but when I look at the discussion, mm -hmm. you know, some of the people who are commenting, um, we have to talk about how women, we talk about the patriarchy. Yes. I think we should define that because I think people are using the word and I'm taking advantage of your, your status as a lecturer, yes. making you define things. But yes. I do see people using these words and I'm not 100% sure they fully understand what they're talking about. I agree so with you So before I ask that question, let, yes. me, let me take advantage and get you 100%. to define the patriarchy. patriarchy. And I will define a number of terms so mm -hmm. that we just cover basically. Yeah. Patriarchy is a structure. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy is a structure or a system that implicates all lives, masculine, feminine, and those who are gender non-conforming, men and women, and those who are sex non-conforming, mm -hmm. right? Patriarchy is a system or structure that uh, locates people in particular statuses, assigning privilege to masculinity mm -hmm. and assigning uh, subordination or less privilege to femininity. It does not mean then that some women or some men have more or less privilege and that there is not this variation. It just means that in general terms, privilege is assigned to masculinity, whatever mm. body that masculinity is worn on, and femininity is not privilege. Right. So patriarchy is a system of asymmetrical mm -hmm. gender relations. Right. That's the technical. Good. Right? <laughs> Along with patriarchy, because of this belief of inherent privilege mm -hmm. versus subordination, mm -hmm. domination and control versus less, mm -hmm. we have things like misogyny and sexism. Misogyny, of course, is definite hatred or dislike or dismissal of femininity right. and by in, in in sex terms women so people don't seem to understand mm -hmm. you can be a cisgendered hetero male mm -hmm. who has no problem engaging in relationships sex, sexual or otherwise mm -hmm. with women but you don't really like definitely women. That is our greatest problem. You have a lot of men who appreciate women's bodies. Mm -hmm. They love it. Oh mm -hmm. my God, women are oh, hot. They love yeah. women's bodies. They love, you know, being with women's bodies mm -hmm. and enjoying women's bodies, but they don't like women's ways of being, right. women's ontology, mm -hmm. because the ideology is that that is not of masculinity, therefore it's less. Why should I appreciate how women talk or walk or smile or what, whatever? Yeah. It is inherently not good. What is the default is masculinity. And a lot of people find themselves in problems with that. A lot of men are like, why do I have to even accommodate? It's just a human way of being. Because yeah. if we sit for five minutes, we realize we're not all that different after all. Mm -hmm. We all have feelings. We all you know, think logically, etc. So you have this misogyny. And from misogyny, you have sexism, where whether we make jokes, we have policies that are biased that come from a male gaze that mm -hmm. suggests, and sometimes you have sexism mm -hmm. um, that affects masculinity as well, mm -hmm. where because of a person's gender, sex, or sexuality, you decide that they are deserving of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So you say that, let me not make too controversial because we are on <laughs> television. Yes, we are. Well, but you make <laughs> statements such as, you know, um, I can't promote a festival because my women don't meet standards of beauty or I will blame the victim or I will call you by your husband's identity and mm -hmm. you lose your identity mm -hmm. or I exclude you from spaces because I think that you're inherently incapable like a student of mine told me women can't play chess when wow. a large portion of, of women a recent student a recent student last semester dominate wow. chess as a game or video games where 47 percent of players are women but it's still considered a male space right so all of these things are reinforcing traditional ideas patriarchal ideas that are sexist and misogynist because you don't you're afraid of losing privilege mm -hmm. in a structure that while it privileges you also um messes up your life because yeah. you are called to account, you're policed. I'm talking about masculinity Because here. masculinity is very limiting. Yes, of Men course. can't cry. Yes. Men can't ask for help. No. They're, you know, it's like you have to be a machine. Masculinity is like a machine. You can't show weakness. You can't. You must you can't be have real emotions. You know, so much is attached to the phallus. You have to be strong. Yeah. You have to be the strongest. Yes. You but, know? you know, a lot of Trini men are not going to be like, I recognize that, you know, I'm implicated in patriarchy <laughs> and I am subordinated in ways. Oh, no. 
they were like, Dada, I don't have any real problems. What are you talking about? Well, exactly, because yeah. how do you, how do you exp explain to persons who might be economically disadvantaged? Mm -hmm. They're not going to understand what you're talking about. Exactly, or even who take privilege for granted. Yeah. In a sense, I always ask my students at the beginning of classes, what does it feel like to be a man? Or what does it feel like to be a woman? Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys tell me it's normal. A lot of women talk about this ambiguous space of feeling privileged, but yet feeling always under threat, right? Yeah. And, and the, 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 the few ma men in my class say, it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I'm yeah. normal. Yeah. And I say, what do you mean by that? And they spend a lot of time trying to figure out what normal really means. Right. Because in fact, you're not scared to walk the street like a woman who is always checking and saying, oh, is that person behind me? Yeah. Are there 10 men in this, in this maxi? You know, that kind of, of, of thing that you're always aware of your gender and your sex, mm -hmm. but you still have so much to account for. If you use broken wrists, you risk losing your masculine identity, yeah. right? If you cry too much, well, what me again? I'm like a woman or what, you know? So they always use that very generalized term. And you know, all of that masks what breeds some of the violence that we see. Mm -hmm. So much masking is done. Because if you're not, if you don't naturally conform mm -hmm. to a very rigid structure of what the ideal Trinidadian man is, you're going to fall into problems. You're exactly. constantly being challenged. You lose that patriarchal privilege. You do. It's, you, it's yes. constantly at risk. Always. Constantly at risk. And that leads to violence and violence and frustration that is often perpetrated on weaker men who incidentally are feminized mm -hmm. or women because you then say if I am to be powerful I then have to assert some form of strength I then have to assert some sort of dominance and I will then do so relationally so it's like you have to step all the way back and address both men and women the, the unfortunate thing with popular discourse and the popular imagination is a lot of people always direct it to women mm -hmm. and never really address men yeah some men are like Hey, we're here too, and they're trying to start, the, but even they are not getting support for their own attempt to like, let's change our lives. Mm -hmm. The other thing is women are also complicit in their own subordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we, because the, the, if masculinity is constricting, so is femininity. Definitely. If you're not, <laughs> there's so many rules. There are many <laughs> rules, as well as women are charged women's bodies, mm -hmm. women's sexual and reproductive um, functions, women's beauty, women's uh, role in the private and public yeah. are tied to maintaining culture. Yeah. And to disrupt that is as if you are trying to change the very essence of who we are. And now I'm going to cite someone, Kate Millett says, mm -hmm. that culture does not question its most essential bigotries. In a sense that you rely on women because they are pro, you know, child bearers mm -hmm. and supposed natural nurturers, which yeah. is another discourse, mm -hmm. to maintain the cultural continuity mm -hmm. as defined by patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So when women question, they go against the grain, they are othered as non-women, lesbian, or simply neurotic. Mm -hmm. And so you are pathologized. So you will have a lot of women who, I want to fit, I want to be real, I want to be virtuous, I want to be a good woman, then reinforcing the very ideologies that undermine their very existence. Mm -hmm. And we have to be sympathetic, but we also have to educate. We have to say, my dear, you may not understand what was wrong because you don't realize the complexity of it, but here's why. Take a moment and reflect. Yeah. I'm not going to try to change your belief in five minutes, <laughs> but take a moment and reflect because basically what you're doing is self-silencing your critique to maintain normativity. Yeah. And unfortunately, that happens every single time there's back and out. Wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, because it, well, these are conversations that we have to have Continue. more of because it's a complex issue and you can't just change culture like that. No. You have no. to, we have to talk, we have to examine our reality and we have to also try and do it in our language. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. You know, that's my area. As I say, I would love, mm -hmm. because I always review um, social media, I, I, I yeah. think social media user-generated content is very powerful. Yeah. I believe, first of all, admit your own subjectivity, mm -hmm. admit your own biases, admit your own shortcomings. 
Admit what happens when you lose your temper. Yeah. When you feel disappointed or confused or under threat. Mm -hmm. Admit to those things, whatever they may be. It may be one way or the other. It might match others. Because if you can admit it, then, then you're you better. It. Yes, you can. Yes. Dr. Barrett, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I you I think this is a conversation me. we're going to have to have more of. Yes. And we're definitely going to have a lot of opportunities yes. to discuss it and explore different areas.